Hey Shubi Doodlers, how are you doing? Well today I'm going to read you this story called Woolus and Lydnia, uh, which is a story I wrote with Wollaston and Lydney Sevenbanks schools in the Forest of Dean and the story is all about how the Forest of Dean came about and particularly how the giant's chair came to be in the sculpture trail in Colford. It's not there anymore, it started rotting away and it was dangerous so they've turned it into charcoal. But um, let's not worry about that. Let's hear the story which I warn you is very, very sad. Woolus and Lydnia is the true story of the Forest of Dean as discovered by the pupils of Wollaston and Lydney Sevenbank schools with a bit of help from Shoe Rayner. When Woolus the giant first gazed into Lydnia's clear blue eyes, he knew he had found his one true love. But Woolus was just a lowly shepherd. Woolus took his flock of sheep and he sailed his boat across the sea and he called the boat the Blue Bell to remind him of Lydnia's clear blue eyes. He called to Lydnia across the waves, I'll find a place where we can be together, then I shall return for you. He sailed and sailed across the ocean until he came to a land that looked perfect for a shepherd and his sheep. But on the shores, dragons and lions and dinosaurs of every description fought each other, for this all happened a long time ago when dragons and dinosaurs still walked upon the earth. The dinosaurs raged and snarled, the dragons spat huge fireballs and the lions roared until the sea was shaken up into a violent tempest. The blue bell fought bravely against the stormy swell but she was forced closer and closer to the rocky shore. A high breaking monster of a wave dashed the boat against the rocks, breaking it into a million pieces. Woolus picked himself up from the beach and looked at the wreckage of the blue bell. He could never return to his beloved Lydnia. Woolus roared with anger and he set about banishing the wild animals from the land. He chased the dragons westwards to Wales and the lions east to England and with his bare hands Woolus dug two trenches either side of his new land and let them fill with water. He called them the rivers Y and Severn. And with all the rock that he dug from the rivers, Woolus made a giant hill and he chased the dinosaurs to the dark north side. And that was the last that was ever seen of them. Woolus hoped that one day Lydnia would come and find him. He let that thought comfort him as he went to work, turning the land into a home for him and Lydnia. He called it the Dean. He built a house with the wood from the blue bell and he hung the ship's name on the door. Every day he planted trees and soon his hill was covered by forest and his sheep wandered freely through the Dean. But Woolus could only think of Lydnia. High up in the forest he made a giant's chair. He would sit there for days, staring out to sea, searching for any sign of Lydnia. Day in, day out he looked. Day in, day out he waited. But every day ended in bitter disappointment. One day, tired of waiting, Woolus lay down among the ferns and fell asleep. The seasons came and went, and each autumn the trees hid him deeper and deeper beneath a blanket of leaves. Woolus had no reason to wake, so he slept on. After five years, Lydnia stopped waiting. She vowed to travel the world 
until she found her beloved Willis. It seemed a hopeless task, but after many months of searching, she saw a wooden house by a rocky shore and recognised the sign upon its door. She dived from her ship and swam and ran through the waves, laughing and crying with joy, for she had found her Woolus at last. The ashes were cold in the fireplace, and cobwebs covered the walls. No sign of Woolus, no joyous welcome. Lydnia ran through the forest where Woolus's sheep still wandered free among the now mighty oaks, but they couldn't tell her where to find him. Lydnia searched the dean again and again. Tears streamed from her beautiful blue, blue eyes, for her heart told her that something awful had happened to Woolus. And when she came to the mighty River Severn that curled and twisted with the salmon that rode upon its tides, Lydnia closed her eyes and slipped quietly into its swirling current. Water filled her mouth. Her hair trailed behind her like elvers swimming in the weeds. In time, her bones crumbled into the shifting sands. Woolus slept through the dinosaur years, and he woke to the sound of men digging like giant moles, hollowing out the ground beneath his forest, winning the iron and coal. Woolus never knew that Lydnia had come so close, and to this day he waits for her to find him. When all is dark and men are sleeping in their beds, Woolus wanders through the Dean, caring for his sheep and his trees and the bluebells that grow wherever Lydnia's tears fell upon the ground. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, there are still some copies left to be got hold of. <laughs> click here for the link. Uh, click down here for another story and click up here to make sure you're subscribed to the Storytime channel. Keep coming back for lots more stories. In the meantime, keep reading, reading, reading. Take care of yourself and I'll see you next time.